Hi guys, welcome to the new story featuring Tsuki Hina. It's an Omega Verse AU wherein Hinata will have an unwanted event that will happen to him. There will be a content or trigger warning for this one. Also, Tsukushima and Hinata were childhood friends. If you are not familiar with Omega Verse, just search it on Google. I'll just opt out the erotic part since I want it to be a little child friendly. Content warning, rape or mention of rape, sexual harassment, suicide or suicidal thoughts or mention of suicide, depression, panic or anxiety attack, and more. You have been warned. If you're uncomfortable with this, please stop reading or listening. You can choose other stories for a while. There are other great or extremely great writers out there. Disclaimer, I do not own the Haikyuu characters that are to be used in this story. Photos or covers were picked from Google. Credits to the owner. The Tsukushima and Hinata were well-known families in the prefecture. Being rich and powerful once since these families were dominant alphas and omegas, respectively, they remained humble. Kei and Shoyo have been friends since they were babies, the families were close. Usually, they'll have a play date in a park or at anyone's house. Kei, Shoyo shouted as he ran towards the said boy. They're having their play date in the park. You're late Shoyo, said Kei. As Shoyo catches his breath replies, sorry. I was just caught up watching the ad of the little giant in the repair shop. Little giant, asked Kei curiously. With enthusiasm, Shoyo replied, yeah, he's playing volleyball, he's not that tall since he's an omega, but he surely can jump high, I want to be like him. K stares at Shoyo almost admiring the latter for his bright personality, you sure you want to play volleyball? Yeah, replied Shoyo, my brother plays that sport, we can ask him to teach us the basics, said K. Really, wait, we, do you also want to play? Asked Shoyo. You can hear his excitement in his voice. K averts his gaze while his cheek is painted a little dust of pink. Cute. He thought. Ahem. I. I want to play that sport and I'm about to ask you if you also want to play. He replies. Wah. Yes. I want to play with you. K. Said Shoyo. You're so cute. Let's go. K said as he pinched Shoyo's cheeks. And Shoyo blushes when K says he is cute out loud. When they reached the age of 13, junior high, Kei and Shoyo were enrolled in different schools, and they also presented by then. As expected, Kei is an alpha while Shoyo is an omega. Kei met Tadashi, an omega, when Tadashi was getting bullied for being an omega, technically helping him while thinking or hoping that Shoyo does not experience the same thing in his school. They become friends, Kei introduces Tadashi to Shoyo and then they also become close. So far. Kei's junior high is going smoothly. On the other hand, Shoyo was having a hard time in his school. He was verbally bullied due to being an omega and playing volleyball even though he's the only member of the said club. He didn't tell his parents or even Kei or Tadashi, thinking he'll be a burden, or he doesn't want his bullies to face grave consequences of their actions if he tells them, and since he can somehow still manage it. Even though he is being bullied, he still manages to excel in his academics and remain cheerful and positive alongside his school, friends, namely Koji and Izumi. Wah, Sho-chan, you are still at the top of the class. Congrats, Izumi said as he cheered for Hanada. As expected, Hanada, congrats, Koji said, thanks, replied Hanada. As they celebrate for a while, one of the bullies started. Ha, being top of a class, yet still an Omega. Omega that the only role in society is to breed, as the second bully followed. Izumi immediately covers Hanada's ears, while Koji glares at the two bullies and says, cut, it, out, and what, asked the first bully with a smirk. Hanada removes Izumi's hands while saying, let's just go to the cafeteria, and walks out of the room followed by Izumi and Koji. Don't mind them, Hanada, said Koji, I know. Let's buy some snacks, then can you help me with my spikes? Hanada said with a smile, expecting his friends to help him. 
Sorry, Sho Chan, but I have basketball practice today. Said Izumi. I can't also. I have an errand after school. Replied Koji. Hanada feels that his friends are avoiding it. Since the two stare at each other before replying. It's okay. Ha ha ha. He said. Hanada was alone in the gym practicing when the door suddenly opened. When he looks at who's opened the door. He saw his bullies there. He tried to ignore them, continuing to practice. Alone, I see, said the first bully as he came near Hanada. I guess his friends don't want to be with him. The other one mocks. Oi shorty, let's have fun, said the third. Hanada still tries to ignore them. The first bully grabs Hanada's wrist tightly and faces Hanada to him, trying to ignore us, shorty. Hanada tries to lose the grip, Lil let me go. The second bully slaps him in the face, shut it, you useless omega. Hey, not in the face. Said by the third bully. Hanada starts to cry. Ah, what a crybaby. No wonder why your so-called friends gradually abandoning you. Said the first bully. Anyway, we also need some practice, you know. And you can be useful somehow. Said the second bully as he cracked his knuckles. Hanada was horrified by the next thing his bullies do. He thought they'll just insult him like usual. Instead, they start punching and kicking him. After the physical bullying, the third bully said, if you try to tell anyone, it will be worse. They left Hanada laying on the ground, full of bruises. He feels so helpless, weak. He doesn't like that he can't do anything to protect himself. And yet, he still didn't say anything. He just sucked it up. After the first physical bullying, it became a daily routine for Hanada. The verbal and physical bullying became too much for him. His cheerfulness declined. He usually just locks himself up in his room with an excuse of, I'm studying. His usual weekend sleepover with Kei and Tadashi was put to a halt with different excuses, of course, he can't hide to Kei those bruises that litter his body, right? Sunshine, aren't you feeling hot with your sweats? Hanada's mom asked when she started to notice his son wears long sleeves more often. Hmm, Hanada replied absentmindedly. I mean, it's not that hot yet. But usually, you don't wear sweaters for long. Hanada's mom said. Oh, um, nope. It feels comfy. That's why I usually wore it. He says. How was school? You're not saying anything these past few weeks. Hanada's dad said while observing his son's behavior. It's fine. It's still the same. Nothing new. He gave a fake smile as he stared at his plate and added, I'm done. I'm heading to my room. Good night. As he goes to his room, his parents exchange worried looks. The only thing that remains his sanity in check is volleyball. The last year of junior high came. It is also the first and last official game that Hanada will have before graduating. He manages to persuade Izumi and Koji to join him to be able to complete his team. He invited Kei and Tadashi to watch his game, but apparently, the two cannot go since it is also the same day as the game Kei's brother. Kei promises Shoyo that he'll pick him up instead at school after the game, to which Shoyo agrees. They plan to surprise Akairu, watching his game, but it's the other way around. Kei was too upset, forgetting his promise to Shoyo. Shoyo's first and last official match in junior high is against Kitagawa Daiichi Junior High where he met Kagayama Tobio, the alpha who insulted him not because of being an omega but because he has potential at playing the sports but wasn't able to use it properly. Shoyo's school lost the match. Just follow the canon where he challenged Kagayama. When they returned, Shoyo had left in the gym alone again. Thinking about the event earlier while waiting for Kei to pick him up. But instead of Kei, his bullies appeared. Look who's here, said the first bully as he smirked. Koji was right, he'll be here in the gym, said by the second bully. Shoyo was surprised when the bully mentioned his friend's name. Well, all this time, those two just making up with this useless Omega, said by the third bully. Anyway, it will be our last time with him. Let's make out of it, said the first bully. Punch and kicks start to land on Shoyo's body. They stop. He thought that would be it. But it was not. This time, they strip Shoyo and start to rape him. He tried to fight back. Kicking and shouting but the three bullies managed to cover his mouth and restrained him. How he wishes Kei will appear and protect him. 
He looked around, trying to see if someone was passing by, but he was surprised to see from the gym door stands Izumi and Koji. Watching as the bullies raping him and left. At that point, he felt abandoned. Helpless. Weak. Alone. He stops fighting back and lets his bullies do everything they want from his body. He's not moving. He's not even crying. He feels so disgusted with himself. After that, you useless Omega. No one loves a weak person like you. No one likes you after all. I guess even your parents hate you. Said the second bully. Not only that, even his faded pair will hate him for not being pure. He let us have his body. Ha ha ha, mocks by the third bully. They left Shoyo laying on the ground of the gym. A total mess. He just stares outside, wishing he just die on that spot. After a few minutes, he tried to stand. His whole body aches. He took his bag, thanking himself that he had packed extra clothes. Wear it and head out. He looks at his phone with a bunch of unread messages from his parents. No messages from K. He texted his parents, saying he had a late practice and heading to K's house. The distance between his school and K's was not long but due to his condition keeps reminding him what happened makes it longer. He just wants to hug K so tightly. He suddenly wants to be comforted by his alpha friend. Do you think he wants to hug you? You're disgusting. That voice. That voice he keeps ignoring for the past three years resurfaces again, but this time stronger that he can't ignore it. He reaches Kay's house and knocks. A maid opens the door and lets him in. He immediately goes to Kay's room, and he knocks at the door. Leave me alone, Kay shouted. Shoyo was shocked by the sudden outburst of Kay. Kay rarely got mad like that. Kay, it's me, Shoyo, he says. Go away, Kay said. But, he was cut it as Kay opened the door with an irritated look. What do you want? Hanada got scared, is... Is everything okay? Maybe I can help. It is none of your business, Hanada. You can't do anything, replied K. But, what? You can't understand what I mean. Why can't you use your brain properly? Just leave me alone, said K with a hint of frustration in his tone. Shoyo was baffled by K's outburst. See, even your childhood friend doesn't want you around. Tears starts to fall in Hanada's eyes, but he wipes it off immediately. Yeah. Okay, bye, Tsukushima. Shoyo starts walking away, limping. K notices it but disregards it since he's still furious about his brother's lies. Shoyo returned home and was welcomed by the head maid, telling him his parents were out since they had an emergency meeting in the company. He just smiles at her and tells her he won't eat dinner since he already ate, which is a lie. He headed to his room, straight to the bathroom, and took a bath. Cleaning himself thoroughly, scrubbing every part of him, trying to remove those disgusting touches, but even with how much he scrubs, he still feels dirty. So dirty. After the long bath, he lay down on his bed, trying to fall asleep, but those disturbing thoughts linger, stronger this time. You're a disappointment. You can't defend yourself. What a weak person you are. You're disgusting. Your faded pair will not want you. Just die. Everyone will be happy if you just disappear. Shoyo, stop, stop thinking, stop listening to them, huh, who's that, he thought since that voice is different from the former, cutting his dark thoughts, he hears that feminine voice, it's so unfamiliar to him, he had never heard it before, maybe he's just hallucinating, he ignores it, including those negative thoughts, and tries to sleep. Another restless night, but this time, it's worse. He hates it. The raping repeats in his dream, a nightmare rather. He usually woke up from those nightmares. But this time it's quite different. That feeling again. That feeling that he just wants to disappear is quite stronger this time. No one will care if you disappear. They will be happy you're gone. He stands from his bed, takes a small piece of paper with his simple message of, sorry, and heads to his bathroom again, filling the tub with water. He took the blade that he kept in the cabinet. He almost tried it before, but there was always someone cutting that attempt. K. K is always there, either calling or barging into his room every time he's planning to do it. He smiled, remembering those times and earlier K's attitude. He won't barge in my room this time. He thought. 
he remembers his promise to Kagiyama and thought, well, I guess I'm not fulfilling it. I'm sorry. Shoyo seats in the tub full of water, then blade in hand. Everything will be fine, Sho. After this, you won't suffer any longer. He thought. He drew the blade near his left wrist, cutting it deep and then on the other one. He let the blood flow mix with the water. He laid his head, waiting for the darkness to take him when a sudden knock on his bathroom door cut his thoughts. Shoyo, open the door, please, said Kei as he knocked on the bathroom door. Tears start to flow in Shoyo's eyes. Why are you here? You can't see me like this, Kei. He thought. Black dots start to appear in Shoyo's eyes as he says, go away, and the darkness consumed him. To be continued. If you like this video, consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button. Bye!